So we've discussed personal development, family, relationships, health, careers, finance, and fun. We conclude our series of the eight facets of life with the most important, the one aspect that touches on all the other aspects of the present life and the only one that impacts the eternal life, faith. Over the last several weeks, we've gone through the eight facets of life with author Chris Conley, some common sense approaches to finding balance in our life. We've talked about personal development, family, relationships. We've talked about health. We've talked about career and finances. We've talked about fun. And finally, we're going to talk about faith, which is really the bedrock for not only these seven other facets of life, but the bedrock of life for, for many of us, yourself and myself included, and certainly an important part of the TV 44 message. Yeah. Um, in my design of the eight facets, I put it at the bottom as, a, as the foundation because at this point in my life, I do realize that is, it is the foundation of our life. Let's talk about a little bit about first things first when it comes to faith. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up primarily as an Easter Christmas Christian. And uh, um, it wasn't until we were about to be married that my wife and I decided we didn't want to be hypocrites. We were going to join a church. And we started going to church. And um, even at that point in time, I was regular in the winter. But because I was a golfer, I was playing golf in the summer. But at some point, a message struck me that this wasn't enough. And I became a 52-week-a-year Christian. And uh, as our kids came along, I decided I don't want to drop them off at Sunday school. I'm going to go to Sunday school. So things just started to click when I got my priorities in order. And we alluded to this a little bit earlier when we were talking about personal development. It's never too late to start. And certainly when it comes to faith, it's never too late to start with faith as well. It doesn't matter when you start your faith journey. Mm. It's a matter of staying on that faith journey. Right. Um, there's so much that, that can be learned. And, um, I, you know, I, I came to Christ primarily when I was 21, but my, my interest and my understanding have done nothing but mature over time. So. And when we talk about maturing over time, it goes back to something that I, I believe your mother taught you, my mother taught me, many mothers, many fathers have taught their children that we reap what we sow, so the more that we sow, the later than we sow. Right. And, you know, this is from Galatians 6. And the idea is that we have to give first. And, at that, and later in life, we're going to reap those benefits. Some people may not. This isn't a guarantee because we know that some people give, 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 and they, they never see anything. But we know that after, they're going to receive everything and then, and then some. And as, as you touched on, faith is the bedrock because when you talk about reaping what you sow, talk about giving back, that goes back to what we talked about with relationships, to make sure it's a two-way street, to, mm -hmm. to be a friend in order to, to have a friend, further proof that you know, faith really infuses the other seven aspects of the life. And it's, it's something that, as you've touched on, it came to you a little bit later in life, but it's never too late to get into church. It's never too late to get into that faith journey. It's never too late to find balance in your life. Right. And, you know, the Bible talks to us about uh, some Christians are, are like a baby with the milk being fed and, and others at different phases of their life. So um, the best way that I think, though, is you find a good Bible-based church if you're not there already and you join a Sunday school class. I mean, sermons are great. It's a lecture format. The Sunday school class is really what opened me up to learning more. And faith is fantastic. Faith is very important. But faith without action is useless. Right. Um, you know, the saying that be prepared to preach a sermon anytime and use words if necessary, that's something that I always liked. It, it's the life that we live that's going to make a difference. We can say many, many things, but if we don't back it up with our life, it means nothing. And, you know, people are going to struggle through different aspects of these eight facets, which is why faith is, is perhaps what we need to, what is most important that we're discussing right now, because a lot of this just goes back to prayer taking time, communicating with the Lord, and really getting a sense of where He is leading you. Mm -hmm. the, uh, I've taught, as you mentioned, I've taught this many times in the past, and I've asked the people and there were participants, what is the most important? And as a group, it's always been faith was number one, not to say that everyone agreed, because they were at different faith journeys. But the key is that people understand 
that when I put first things first, everything else in my life is going to come to play. Now, you've developed these eight facets of life uh, over many years. How have you seen this impact you and, and others? Well, it's impacted me the most because I'm the, uh, the one that put it together, naturally. I feel like, though, as I prepare to come to the station today, uh, as I prepare to talk with others about it, it does make me a better person just leading up to that day because it reinforces everything that I believe. But again, if I don't continue in the Word, um, it's easy to, to drop off some. You know, we talked about the exercise. You've got to make those kind of habits, and church is the same kind of thing. I can get in the habit of going and being regular, and I can also fall out of it once I miss a week or two. What other resources can you re recommend for people as they look to achieve better balance with their faith aspect? I think the big thing is um, daily devotions, for sure, um, because it's not just about going to church on Sunday. Um, but I also like, we talked about twofers earlier, <clears throat> I, I use um, my telephone, and when I do a workout, I'll watch many sermons through podcasts or just through their website. You have Charles Stanley, David Jeremiah, Joel Osteen here. I like all those. Uh, I also like Kyle Eidelman, James Merritt. All right, thank you very much, Chris Conley, as we have discussed the eight facets of life, and Chris is available to teach this as a workshop for your group or organization. You can contact him at theconleys102 at gmail.com. You can also catch up on the other seven aspects of life, facets of life, on our website, faithandfriends.wtlw.com.